If we look at example number two, this time we're not given the position function, we're given the velocity function. Now this velocity function should look familiar, it's the velocity function from the previous problem, right? And it's very similar questions are being asked. I'm not actually looking to solve these questions right here, right now, because they're solvable once we start going into this idea of distance traveled, and, and we get into this uh, upcoming idea of something that's known as the definite integral, okay? But Overall, the concept now for our course is going to be, hey, I still want you to answer the same question. All right? You still want to find the total distance traveled, okay? but this time you don't have the position function like you did in example one. You have the velocity function in example two. Now, if we're interested in the total distance traveled from t equals four to seven, we know what the answer is. We found it in, part, uh, in one part d. It's a total of 45 units. So how do we get the 45 units from the velocity function. We were able to get the 45 units using the position function. How do we get it from the velocity function? Right? And that's uh, a calculus topic that was actually been discussed for many years. And when, when Leibniz and Newton were, were looking to, to solve um, this concept, they took a look at the graph. Let me just change the, there we go. Let's get everything on the screen there. All right. Um, they were looking to change things around and say, okay, so we've got a marathon. Okay, and she's running nine miles per hour uh, from t equals seven hour seven a.m. to t equals nine a.m. Okay, how far does she travel during this two-hour training run? Okay, and and you can come up with the answer. If not, pause it quickly. And how far did she travel? If she did nine miles per hour for two hours, yeah, exactly. She did eighteen miles. How did you get that? Well, you said, okay, well, I know that distance is equal to rate times time. One of the formulas that we've dealt with for a long time in math classes, right? We're interested in the distance that she traveled. Well, what's her rate? It was nine miles per hour. How long did she run for? Two hours. Nine times two gives us 18 miles. So she's training for Boston in a couple of months, and she just did an 18-mile training run on this Saturday morning. Okay. Well, that's one way to solve this. Is there another way to look at this and solve the problem? And that's what our calculus forefathers were taking a look at, all right? Specifically, they were looking at the graph, okay? Let's graph the velocity function. So if we graph their runner's velocity, um, she was traveling nine miles per hour. So here's nine up here, and that is her velocity, okay? And that's going for a total of two hours. So, and we see one and two, and this is the question that's being asked on the back side of the, that first page of the notes, all right? What if we took a look at the graph? Well, we're only interested up until the two-hour mark, all right? So we have, if we look at it, a rectangle that's being formed here between time zero and two and our velocity function. Right? Now, we do have a rectangle. Let me ask you this question. What's the area of this rectangle? Exactly, it's 18 again, all right? The base of our rectangle is two units. The height of our rectangle is nine units. And if we are interested in the area in between, we just do two times nine, and we get 18 again, all right? So what we see here is that the region that's between our function, in this case our velocity function, our derivative, okay? Because remember, velocity is the derivative of position. So the region between the derivative and the x-axis, if we find the area of that region, then that answer is this total distance traveled idea. So if we were to graph 4t minus 7 from the, um, excuse me, from the, uh, from t equals 4 to t equals 7, and we will do that soon, okay? If we were to find this graph and we're to look at the area under 4t minus 7, we should come up with an answer of 45, just like we did in example 1, part d. And this idea of finding the area under the graph is leading us to these huge discoveries and really setting up the second half of the course.